Well, thank you for joining us on tonight's episode on Security Lens. Uh, we are the issues confronting the nation's peace and stability are tackled head on. And we three hope that the solutions provided will shine the light in the dark areas. I am Victor Mbandike. Our focus tonight will be on the current face-off between the leadership of the indigenous peoples of Biafra IPOP and the federal government, especially now that wearing a Biafra flag attire could end you an unceremonious invite to the Army Headquarters or DSS office. The troops of the Nigerian Army arrested a popular Nollywood actor, Chiwe Talo Agu, while allegedly inciting members of the public and soliciting support for the proscribed uh, indigenous people of Biafra. Could that be the reason why he was picked up, or was the attire in itself a security threat? And joining me to discuss this is Comrade Victor Ojai, a public relations officer with Delta State Coalition of Civil Societies, and of course, uh, the lead activist for Young Nigerian Rights Organization. But firstly, let's bring you some security updates. The Lagos State Police Command has warned that it will crush any attempt to commemorate the anniversary of NSAR's protest. Uh, the State Police boss, Hakim Odumosu, based his stance on the mayhem uh, that trailed the protest, which was hijacked by hoodlums and the attendant uh, loss of lives and property. CP Hakim Odumosu on Monday, given an advance warning to the youths, groups, individuals or associations planning to commemorate one year anniversary of NSAR's protest in the state to stop the project in their own interest. We have to check ongoing sales and circulation of prohibited arms in the country. Uh, the force management team may henceforth approve deployment of more police women for stop and search operation on the nation's highways. And this is coming as the force headquarters paraded 34 suspects, including two women arrested by men of the force special tactical squad for alleged kidnapping for ransom, armed robbery, car snatching, and sale of prohibited firearms and ammunition. A correspondent, Sam Ogwefun, compiled the report. It was the usual parade of arrested suspects by the force public relations officer, but not without a shocking revelation from two female members of a syndicate. The suspects confessed to have in recent times involved in the supply of arms from Nassau State to armed bandits operating between Kaduna, Katina, and Kano states. <laughs> Okay, that she delivered the gun from Nasara to uh, Kaduna and she handed it over to Babangida. Here. That Suleiman gave her a uh, gun from Kujama up to Kaduna Junction. To this end, the force headquarters says female security operatives will be deployed to the highways to carry out thorough search on suspected women on the road. You gradually begin to see more police women participating in stop and search operations on our major cities and highways so that we will be able to frisk female citizens as closely and as intimately as we do to their male counterparts. Aside that, one Bashiru Sule confessed to be a commercial driver operating in a motor park in Kano, but he said he is also a member of a kidnapping syndicate. He said he used to go to the park and enter vehicle with the victim or with the other passengers that they want to kidnap. The responsibility he throws up on managers of our motor parks is the need for them to be more detailed in what they do and work with the local police stations and other security networks within their areas of operation to keep their motor parks uh, free of persons like um, Bashiru and his likes. Exhibits recovered from the suspects include two AK-47 rifles, one pump-action gun, two locally fabricated guns, three pistols, several life ammunition, 15 stolen vehicles, and a car jammer device allegedly used by the armed men to deactivate car trackers. Well, the Nigerian police has called on Nigerians to resist the urge to rush to a crime scene immediately after a crime occurs. It says this action contaminates crime scenes. 
The Commissioner of Police in Charge of Forensics at the Police Force Criminal and Investigation Department, Shewu Guazo, met the call during a dialogue on seeking a synergy between security agencies and forensic grants in Africa. Shagu Ojumu reports. This is what a typical crime scene looks like. You will see this sort of scene replicated in many crime scenes in the West. But in Nigeria, most parts of Africa, this is what you see in the aftermath of a crime. Chaotic scenes. Crucial evidence which could help solve the case either get contaminated or lost totally amidst the chaos. But there are some who are determined to change this narrative. These forensic ambassadors say the skills they possess could prove key in Nigeria's fight against terrorism. In security and all of that has engulfed Nigeria and Africa in general. And we saw a need to see how we can be able to make our own little impact by sensitizing people and encouraging them to apply forensics in solving some of these uh, uh, situations. Crime scene processing and documentation is a science that is relatively new in these parts. But the police is beginning to realize just how important it is to crack in cases. This is why it is eager to partner with organizations who will help it achieve its objectives. So that any time when crime is committed, everybody will know his role. No need for people to rush because they are going to spoil the evidence there. When security agencies go, these are the telltale signs of the crime committed they will look for. But once people gathered, uh, maybe the onlookers and so on, they will just destroy the evidence. Angela Brown runs an NGO which helps people overcome substance abuse. She says drugs fuel many of the crimes and terrorist activities Nigeria is grappling with. For a crime to be committed, there has to be something that led to that impulse. Normally, it's usually mental health, drug abuse, societal influences like desperation, or the person is just a misfit. One of the key aims of this dialogue is to put a spotlight on crime scene investigation and why it must be carefully mainstreamed into Nigeria's security architecture going forward. The people here will be hoping they have driven home that message well enough. And following the opera that greeted the arrest of popular Nollywood actor Chiwetalo Agu at Newi Anambra State, the director, Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Oyema Wanchiku, in a statement on Thursday, uh, said Agu, a Nollywood actor, was arrested while allegedly wearing a very well known attire of the proscribed group. Uh, Wanchiku said that Agu attempted putting up some resistance uh, when troops made efforts to take him into custody adding that he was neither assaulted nor brutalized. According to him, the Nigerian army recognizes the inalienable rights of the citizenry to freedom of movement and expression as enshrined in the constitution. He ever stressed that violation of the law by any individual or group to incite the public and cause mayhem will not be tolerated. An operatives of the Nigeria Civil Defense Corps, Imo State Command, under the leadership of Commandant Michael Olga, has apprehended four notorious oil bunkering syndicates in the state. According to the Commandant, the products uh, that they were conveyed in three different trucks are illegally refined. And one of the suspects spoke to newsmen on the arrest. In most cases, some of them have been supplied to batches, to some, some tank farms in Data State. Because the owners of the tank farms have not done importation for the, for the last three years. So there's no way they can get genuine products to dispense. So this, these products are the ones that have been, been produced in, in the creeks of data city legally. And they now bring them to Imo State for sale. That's all that shared my way. Like yesterday I load. Yesterday when they are choosing our load. Shared the way. I said we'll be three truck now load. We require our mama. No, so I'm a driver. Who is but the do, you know, do you know the Wait. source of this product? Okay. I don't know. All I know, I'm a driver and I loaded from private private depot. Okay. The commandant also paraded one Simeon Anuwekwe, who was arrested for defiling an eight years old girl in his community in Ehime Mbano local government area of the state. 
And the Quran State government has suspended the head of an Islamic school accused of ordering the flogging of some students accused of misconduct. A female Islamic student in Quora, along with four of her mates, were publicly flogged on the order of the Madrash head. And the government has suspended the cleric, ordered the probe, and will, while taking uh, the students to hospital for medical care. And the decision was taken after a visit of the Quora State government delegation uh, to the Arabic school. And that will be all on the news segment. Let's now join Comrade Victor Ojoy as the conversation continues. Don't go anywhere. Well, Comrade Victor Ojoy is a public relations officer with Delta State Coalition uh, of Civil Societies and the lead activist for Young Nigerian Rights Organization. Well, it's good to have you on the program, Victor. Yeah, it's good to be here. Thanks for having me here. Fantastic. I thought you were going to say your name was Wong. I wanted to find out where Wong is coming from. <laughs> That's my media company name. Well, you, are, you have to explain to Nigerians much more later on the show. Well, there seems to be no end yet uh, uh, to the drama, or should you call it now, face-off uh, between the federal government and uh, the IPOP uh, leadership, especially in the southeast uh, part of the, of the country. Uh, you already know that uh, the southeast is, is um, almost looking like a danger zone now where there are a lot of security issues you know, popping out every single day and week in, week out. Uh, the governors of these regions do not seem to have solutions to these uh, issues. And quite recently, we saw the Nigerian army picking up um, a certain chief with who, of course, is a, a popular Nollywood actor. And then the excuse was the fact that he was uh, inciting the public and or... Uh, the attire that he was putting on uh, was probably the issue. What do you make of all of these issues going on around the South? I mean, the fracas, there's no love lost indeed between the federal government and the leadership of the proscribed IPOP. Uh, first, um, one thing uh, Chueta Agu needs to know, in as much as we are all agitating for Biafra or secession from Nigeria, uh, he should know that we have laws in, in Nigeria. There is no part of the world where they don't have um, rules and regulation. Uh, what he did was not um, the right thing because such action um, could lead to incitement and could lead to security breach. We already have security threats already in the Southeast. And uh, we don't need to add more, um, give, give more platform to hoodlums and criminals who are now hijacking, um, taking advantage of the uh, present uh, predicament of the Southeast to carry out um, their criminal activities. Because at, at the time of um, when the unity of a country is being um, threatened, um, human rights will be suspended and um, enforcement of the law to ensure that there is unity will be the uh, priority of uh, that nation or that country. So these, these, these are rules that are existing. Uh, that is why you can see that um, upon the release of Chuetago by the DSS, by the, sorry, by, by the Nigerian army, the DSS um, I invited him. And uh, till now, I don't know if he's still in the custody of the uh, DSS. So one thing our governors in the Southeast and the Nigeria needs to know is that uh, we should put humanity first in whatever actions or inactions we are going to take. Uh, the Southeast governors, they have no, uh, no, no uh, 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 answer to this uh, current security breach because um, they assume that uh, using force is the way out. But like um, the late uh, T.B. Joshua used to say, say, let love lead. Let humanity lead. Let humanity first. Uh, you will take note that um, unemployment, you need to check the factors that led, lead, uh, that led to insecurity. Let us uh, assume that the minority um, constitution of Nigeria, uh, led by uh, the late um, uh, Bala Usman and Oshoba, had it been, it was implemented in 1979, uh, that, and that would have taken care of the socioeconomic aspect of the youth. You will see that the, the crime rate in Nigeria would have been reduced. Now, the Southeast, you will take note now that 
there's a, a lot of criminality, a lot of terrorism, a lot of gangsterism going on. Even some persons are suspecting that some of these uh, killings or sponsored assassinations are state-sponsored. It is being sponsored by the state uh, actors because there was a rumor or propaganda that a police officer at uh, Uwere shot a young man that uh, was a uh, firing gun at them who they suspected was to be an unknown gunman, only for them to see an um, ID card of the DSS on the, um, uh, the young man that was killed by the police officer. So people started saying that uh, it's being sponsored by um, the states, that most of the unknown government activities is not really from the IPOB, that is being sponsored by the uh, state government or the state actors. Um, the uh, IPOB too will still release their own uh, 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 press release that they are not the ones um, carrying out all those killings. And um, you, if you take note, you will still find out that there is a, uh, an economic uh, sabotage ongoing in the southeast. And the governor of Anambra State made it clear that they are losing about uh, tw 20, almost 20 billion naira per, per, per week each time they go on this their seat at home on Mondays of the week. You can see that this is not helping you. This is not helping the state government either. Based on they are still losing on their tax uh, return that they were supposed to get from the citizens. The state government should know that violence will not be the solution to this um, insecurity in the south. Let, let, let me take you about it a bit, um, if I have to so much. Uh, pause you there, uh, Victor. Uh, but this is quite a very sensitive issue, especially as uh, everyone is looking for how we can uh, put up a mediation between uh, the leadership of this proscribed IPOB and the federal government. Uh, when you said that um, uh, the actions taken by the popular Nollywood actor Chiwetel Agu was uh, uncalled for, uh, are you saying that um, people can't put on whatever they want to put on across any part of the country? I mean, that is just uh, a cloth, albeit a Biafra flag uh, call. I mean, what, what crime has he committed? Uh, could he have been picked up or arrested in any other part of the country aside from being picked up in a non state? What, 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 what value is this to the Nigerian uh, army or how, how, how is he a threat to the nation's security? Uh, you, you know, fundamentally, uh, we all have a right to freedom of expression. Uh, Chuetago has a right to express himself. But based on the present predicament in the Southeast, um, such actions could lead to incitement because of the um, outfits that he, he, he used that particular day. Um, some person said he said that he was using it to shoot a Nollywood uh, movie. Uh, but um, uh, for all indication, it was obvious that he was not really shooting a Nollywood uh, movie. He was just trying to agitate for the Biafrans. Itself that this year, I believe uh, in Biafra, but I believe that we must go through peace and negotiations because there are a lot of countries in this world that are existing today, countries like India, who never killed anybody to um, get their freedom. Mahatma Gandhi used petitions, peaceful means to um, achieve freedom of Indians. So, and there are a lot of, more than a thousand peace activists that has achieved uh, freedom for their nation through peaceful agitation. So, if I will lend my voice here through this platform, I will want Nigerians to know that uh, we need peace, we need unity. Um, the Igbos are the people, if you want to talk about any tribe that loves this country more than any other tribe, the Igbos are the people who love Nigeria more than anybody. Nibo man is a man that can go to Sokoto in the north, far north, and he will get married to even a Muslim uh, woman, start living there, start doing uh, his business there, build a house, and he will continue living there. There is no part of the world that you go that you will not see an Igbo man. The Igbo people are not troublesome people. And I will see, uh, like I said, call on the Igbos. Let them look at what uh, is ongoing and... Uh, they should know that nothing is greater than love, nothing is greater than peace. Um, the DSS should caution a uh, that he should um, do everything possible 
not to incite um, um, the Igbos. You should do everything by not putting on those outfits in logically the Logically speaking, now. Tension, Lo logically then, speaking, um, now. If every uh, uh, able man or woman out there begins to put on those uh, such different from the Nigerian uh, army, be picking them up one by one. I mean, you know, like I said, we all have a right to freedom of expression, but we should know that in Violence Against Persons Act, twenty fifteen that we should do everything not to aid, abet, or incite any, anything that will lead to chaos or anarchy. Because anarchy can never win. Nobody wants anarchy. Because when there is anarchy or war, you know that there will be hunger, there will be starvation, there will be pains, there will be a lot of sickness, and there will be no drugs. So we should do everything that in as much as we want a Biafra, we must go for our Biafra through peaceful uh, method. And that is the only way and how we can truly win. Violence can never be the way out to achieve whatever we have in mind in terms of cessation from uh, Nigeria. All right, fantastic. Victor, before I let you go, uh, the, the leadership of IPO, or the proscribed IPO, brother, have been trying to extend... Uh, or make known their grievances to the federal government. And one of such policies that uh, they put up recently was the sit-at-home order by force. I mean, shouldn't the government be listening by now? I mean, because otherwise, uh, we could be uh, getting into a serious, serious problem in the Southeast. Yes, you know, I said it initially that the governor of Anambra State, Governor William Biano, he has uh, lamented that um, uh, each week that uh, that they sit at home, the Igbos have been sitting at home, that uh, they, are, they are losing close to 20 billion naira. And you know what that could have done for the state uh, government in terms of uh, revenue generation. Uh, this is economic sabotage. And then uh, the federal government also needs to um, find a middle ground to um, make peace with the, these um, agitators because before now, the IPOB, the Biafrans have been existing, and they were peaceful. They have never done anything to um, assassinate or attack anybody or condition anybody. Now they have, uh, the things are falling apart. We just have to come together and find a common ground so that peace will exist and then everybody will be happy by the end of the day. Fantastic, uh, Victor Ojai. We very much appreciate your time on the show again. Uh, we do hope that uh, uh, the peace that each and every one of us are uh, looking for right now in the country uh, comes into fusion. Victor Ojai is a public relations officer with Delta State Coalition of Civil Societies and lead activist for Young Nigerian Rights Organization. Uh, thank you very much again, once again, for being part of the show. Thank you. And that would be the much that we can take on the program. Uh, many thanks uh, to the production crew for making this happen and ensure that you stay crime free this week. Do not get into trouble. I hope to see you again next week uh, when Security Lens revisits re your screen. Do have a lovely evening.